Welcome back guys, this is One More Block 907 here, and today I'm going to be walking you through and giving you some post commentary for Minecraft Diversity 2 Any% No Hub Glitches. Uh, it's a category mode creation, no one else runs it, so this is the world record. Although, um, it's a very interesting run, and it personally it's my favorite category of Diversity 2 because the other runs are either too long or they don't showcase any of the bugs that are interesting in my opinion, or they showcase so many that the run is just over too fast. I have posted a video of this in the past, although that time was significantly bad compared to this one. Uh, this time was actually very good, especially compared to the last one because the last one didn't have nearly as many... Uh, uh, glitches and I found new out of bounds since the last run and I found new tricks, new skips. Uh, I also learned the labyrinthian branch and I'm skipping the arena branch which is the fastest method uh, that I'm aware of in order to beat this the map. Anyway uh, we're just doing some standard diversity two things right now just go run forward put the dead bush in the chest run through the intro go open the chest with the books in order to open the door and then keep on running, uh, complete the first step of the monument with the white wool there, to grab it and put it in the chest, and then we get the staircase up. And first thing you'll notice is I actually do the parkour first instead of the boss battle, because the parkour is actually the riskiest part. One thing you did notice there is I actually waited before jumping in, and that's important, because if you don't wait long enough, there's actually a chance that the uh, freebie room won't open if the autosave happens at the wrong time. So it's important that I waited there so as to not, because if you uh, the freebie room doesn't open the run is not completable. I mean, you can still complete it by just completing the arena branch, but it's slower, so it's not even worth it to try to complete the run. I think the only mistake I made in this branch, there might be one more, I'm not sure, was that four block jump that I failed there, although everything else is very clean in this. I actually got a very good split. You can see my splits, of course, in the top left corner. I'm just using live split in order to display those. It's some pretty standard diversity two parkour. Not too much interesting to talk about in this particular section. Basically just uh, go through it like any normal run. We will deviate a little bit from the glitchless route uh, once we get to the top layer, but first we just need to complete all the bottom layers, uh, which does require a little bit of skill. Advanced is somewhat difficult, but I actually think that um, the uh, intermediate and basic are harder than the advanced. So actually I did fail there, which kind of sucks a little bit, but that's a good 10 seconds or so lost, but it's all right. We'll, uh, we'll get back to it. Or do it. I might end up running this category some more, I'm not quite sure, um, but this actually was ahead of my average time for this completion. This was a green split after I finished this branch, but because normally the advanced is somewhat difficult. Okay. I used to run and jump on the uh, top of that platform and just go up the little slabs there in order to get around. I thought it would be more effective to cut a corner, but I believe after doing some testing that it's faster to um, run underneath the, the platform instead of jumping around it because the jumping requires you to stop sprinting and whatnot, whereas it's not that much longer to go around the, um, the inside. And here's the intermediate branch completed. Note that I complete them in reverse difficulty order because obviously the advanced is the most risky one. So if I fall there f several times, I'll just reset. Um, it's better to get that one out of the way first in order to reset. Early if I need to reset, that is. Um, the the basic here, pretty basic, of course, there's a lot of jumps you can skip in this one. You can see I'm skipping almost every other jump here. Those, some of those jumps where you're skipping the jumps are actually somewhat difficult because they're three or four block jumps uh, that are... Definitely not the easiest thing in the world, but yeah. So now we'll see the out of bounds. I, if I remember correctly, this run actually has a very good out of bounds. Um, I performed this when I'm recording this commentary. I believe this I performed this run a few days ago, uh, so it was not immediately after I completed this run that I'm recording the commentary. So I don't remember everything from it. <coughs> Let's do the timing first, of course. The timing is the part that has the out of bounds in it that allows us to complete parkour faster um, than thing so the way you do the out of bounds is just flipping a switch getting stuck in the glass and then jumping up and pressing lever that was the first try out of bounds that was better than my previous route or not route but uh, run first try out of bounds i believe i had a fourth try out of bounds if i remember correctly on my last record so this is already saved time which I'm very good at saving time there by missing the jump that is a fairly difficult jump though although here we should just be able to get right on up to the top with the pink wool We'll split 52 seconds ahead, put the pink wool in the chest, and head into the freebie room. And again, we'll just push the button and then leave because it takes a while for the freebie room, freebie room to talk to us. So we may as well just get the next branch out of the way while we're waiting. Uh, you may also notice that this 
run does not have any game audio. This is due to a capture issue with OBS. Uh, unfortunately, there's not really any way I can fix that now. Uh, I'll make sure to test it next time before I start if I do another run of this because I don't I want to make sure that we have uh, audio in the, the runs. Although, it's not too big of a deal here. There's just no audio for this run. I didn't realize it until after when I watched the footage and I was like, darn, but it's alright. So we'll just put all this stuff away. We don't need the chest plate. We'll just take it off. Um, and so then we're going to do the first out of bounds in the run. Well, no, I guess the uh, um, the parkour branch had the out of bounds as well. But we'll do the next out of bounds in the boss battle, which this is a new discovery that I made recently. So we hope that he shoots the left skull because that one, or the right, even the right skull. It'll be his left, our right. And then we basically stand here, jump, and we need a pause buffer in order to uh, um, wait till his skull starts regenerating. That's my visual cue. Then you leave the game so that way you don't die from it to get invincibility. You log back in and boom, you're blasted over here. And then guess what? You can go right down here onto the redstone. Save and quit here so you don't die, of course. And look at that. Now we're down here on this redstone and just doing a little parkour over to that black wool. Pushing the button will activate the segment that's normally used to get the black wool. And so there we go. And we actually got a gold split out of that. I did split a little bit early, but it's only by a second or so, so I'm not too, too concerned about that. Um, so go ahead and put the wool and the die in there. Put the yellow wool away, and the adventure, or not the adventure, the arena even, is already completed because of that. Next up is the adventure branch. Going in here, and we'll go ahead and just start running through the adventure branch. Adventure branch route is pretty much the exact same as we had in the previous run, I do believe. Um, I will remember to leave a link to that previous run um, in the description below, so that way you guys can watch it if you like. Um, it was a very good run for before I had all the strategies and whatnot for that I now use here, like completing the labyrinthian instead of the arena. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead and dupe this mirror plate a little bit, which if I remember correctly, these are the... I will note that now that the arena branch is out of the run, the dupes here in Adventure, both the mirror plate dupe and then the key dupe in a minute, um, are the uh, only two dupes sessions left in the run. So we do exactly four dupes in this run. We dupe this plate three times and then we dupe the... Uh, um, to get up to eight. So we dupe it, do three dupes in order to get up to eight plates, and then we uh, dupe the key once. So we have four dupes left in the run, and all of them are in the adventure branch, just in order to duplicate some key items and avoid using them later. So this we only missed one dupe in this dupe here in this run, which is actually very good. Again, wasted dupes don't really waste that much time because this category is timed with in-game time. One thing you will notice, though, um, here is that I no longer use the Minecraft Timer separate program. I actually use a uh, feature in Live Split that you can use by changing the game that you're running to Minecraft Java Edition. And you can see that timer on the bottom. The real time is the timer on top that's constantly counting up, but the one that says 7 minutes and 55 seconds right now on the very bottom the green number, that is the uh, Minecraft time. So it's in-game time and only updates on autosaves or when I save and quit out of the game. Because that's when the uh, um, stats file is updated in Minecraft. Which are all very technical things, but it's not really that important. So now, after we complete this mirror plate puzzle, we can do it. Again, pretty self-explanatory. This is, besides the dupes, the same route that you take in uh, a uh, glitchless route. So we take the orange die, we take the speedrun gear, the stakes, and honestly, I don't even think you need to take the stakes anymore. I used to take them, but um, I do take them, but if I do further runs of this, I probably wouldn't even bother with the stakes, because you only would eat one stake, um, and then at that point, when you eat the stake, you only have like 30 seconds left of the branch, so the only time you need the stakes is if a, if you die or something, you need to do a backup, um, like you fall down or you get hit or something and you need to heal, but for the most part, you don't even use the stake. So I wait extra long here just to make sure that that key is able to be picked up, because this is the hardest dupe here, because you don't really have anything to jump off of into the key, but I believe this dupe was actually successful. And there it is. We still have invincibility from saving and quitting, so we don't take fall damage, fall down, place the key on the door, and run through. We'll get to the next door right up here. Go through. Sometimes those skeletons are in a really bad place where they're able to hit you as you come out. And that creeper is also pretty badly placed as well. This is normally where I eat the stake going up the ladder, but I forgot. And you'll see here, I believe we actually, I don't need a stake during the rest of this branch. So there's not even really a need to grab the stakes. Again, unless you need a backup for some reason, like a skeleton hits you and you need to heal or whatnot. Or maybe you took the wrong way in the maze for some reason, but this is a relatively simple maze, especially compared to like the labyrinthian or whatnot. Anyway, just proceeding up here. I think I almost fell off here. Yeah, the skeleton shot me, and I was just being very cautious here because I do not want to fall down. Anyway, toss the orange die in. 
die right there, split, and that's another gold at a minute 24. Um, and then we'll proceed to the dropper branch, which is fairly difficult. It's the last branch that really requires skill. Um, there's not really too many other branches that require any skill. I believe it's just the, mainly the... Uh, um, the, the, re the way I order the branches is first by the first branch, the parkour branch, requires the most skill out of all of the branches. So I place that one first. Then the boss battle branch is luck based, so I base that one next because if I died too many times, or he. I don't die too many times per se, but if he decides not to shoot his head too many times, then he will, uh, will reset out of that as well. The adventure also requires a little bit of skill, both in the form of dupes and also in like escaping the skeletons and whatnot, so I place that one next. Dropper also requires some skill not to die, although with saving and quitting that you've seen throughout the branch just to avoid fall damage, it's very easy. Again, just classic save and quits. The only one that we don't save and quit on is the code one, where it is. It's even slightly faster to save and quit on these ones, because you could land in the water. This one's not too difficult to land in the water, but it's just safer to save and quit, in my opinion, and also it's just faster because you can run directly through to the... Um, the doorway instead of trying to do it. This one I found the best way to do it is just to um, go all the way to the far wall on the front and then save and quit because there's no uh, none of the little uh, lines of blocks in the way as you fall down. This one here, just I try to land as close to the button as possible just on one side of the button right here because you know, the closer you are to the button the faster you can hit it obviously so there we go. The B140 is uh, somewhat difficult. You, I try to jump with that sand because I think it actually speeds it up so you don't get stuck inside the sand when you fall down. Then you want to jump off here, avoid the icicle, and make sure you're going straight as long as possible to land as far, as close to the button as possible. Um, there we go. Get it. That's the one that saves the most time because you need to uh, fall down normally, uh, manually onto each icicle, and it takes a long time to fall down onto those. Anyway, again, another save and quit here. It just saves a little bit of time from needing to swim out of the water and then run to the button. Um, same thing with this one here. Again, it just saves you from needing to go up the ladder after you hit the water and go through it. Okay. There we go. And then we're going to have one more save and quit for the dropper, which is the final dropper when the floor opens up here. Beautiful. Drop down. And I believe I actually oriented myself perfectly over the button. I just want to get as close to the button as possible to the point where I saw I was so close that I just started like like butterfly clicking my mouse, I believe, in order to hit the button as fast as possible. And then I got it there. And that's a green split out of dropper. Next up is the Labyrinthian, which is probably the most boring branch. Uh, it's basically just memory, memorizing the path that you need to take. One thing you will notice is that in all the dark sections of the map, I actually hacked my gamma to be uh, as high as possible. I hacked it to be about a uh, 1,000 gamma, I believe. Normally, it's on a scale of 0 to 16. So, But the 1,000 gamma here, you can see, I can see everywhere. And that's for a few reasons. Number one, it just helps me to be able to see. It doesn't really provide any advantage unless you're like talking about being able to see. So... That's why you're able to see this in perfect clarity here without it being dark. So, in the old routes for uh, um, the thing, the wor the record for Glitchless doesn't does take this route, but some of the older records, like Illumina's old records and stuff, the popular ones, um, did not take the route. They actually went to go grab stakes before doing this, and I somehow missed that plate. That's very. That's a little bit of a time loss, a second or two. Also realize if you align yourself when you go into the portal, you can actually run forward straight and pick up the chest. And I think I don't do it here, but you can also align yourself to be able to run out of the portal easier so you don't need to turn around when you're running out. But I did need to turn around, but I believe I do it on the other ones. So, this Labyrinthian branch is very good. I learned how to do the Labyrinthian branch. Basically, I just went into a test world and um, set up a chain of like glowstone or something on the top that shows me the route that I need to take in order to get to the labyrinthian branch. I'm going to just practice running through it until I memorize it and memorize that I have and I'm able to run through it pretty much flawlessly now. Um, just try not to hesitate. So the only time I pick up saturation is on that plate right there, that and the first one as well, but that's just mainly get speed, not saturation. So I pick up some saturation from that plate. We'll just keep running. We don't even bother with the stakes. There's no need for them. 
because fun fact the route that Illumina already uses and like not Illumina specifically but the old route um, literally takes all of the uh, um, it goes past three different of the pressure plates in the middle not including the one in the uh, the top one so it's literally easier to just like not even bother going to the stakes it's less to memorize and also faster it saves at least 20 seconds to 30 seconds or so to do this route instead but if you go and look at the record on speedrun.com I actually did check it out to see if it was using the strategy and they are using the strategy here uh, the record for a uh, um, glitchless I might add Next up is the green one. Most of these things are very simple. They're just like basic things of each other. Basically you run down this hallway for some reason and then you go past the pressure plate and then you just run down the far hallway there. Like they're all basically the same. If you don't already know this maze is basically just a copy pasted version of itself that's rotated like five times in MC Edit in order to make a maze. Q Magnet even said in his uh, Devcom episode that this was the ma this maze was specifically made in order to break the left-handed rule that you're able to stick to the left hand and always be able to finish the maze. I'm not sure if the maze actually succeeds in doing that, but it's relatively easy to kind of cheat because all the pathways are the same and you can recognize a lot of these like those two pathways there right next to the pressure plate and then we go down the same pathway like three different times and get to different things. Two of them it takes us to a skull and then this one it takes it to a ladder. And then we go to the red layer in the red layer. School's very close to the ladder, actually only a little sprint away, maybe 10 seconds or so, and there it is. And again, you can see me aligning myself. I try to align myself about um, between the, the clay there and the middle of the clay, so that way my crosshair, when the thing is swirling, my crosshair doesn't dip below the um, where it's on the clay, you know? And then I make sure to turn towards the wall when I run out, so that way I'm able to run immediately instead of needing to turn around. And you can see I actually got very lucky with a creeper spawn here. I'll be able to suicide very fast. Also note that I deliberately did not get any more health on that last pressure plate on the green layer. This is due so that way the creeper, uh, well not the creeper, but I can lose health on that ladder and then if I need to use a skeleton or a zombie to hit me it doesn't take as long. Anyway, that's a green split on Labyrinthian and we'll continue on to Trivia. Trivia does have a new out of bounds that I found. It's not too much faster than going through it, but it does require less memorization. So I do that. It only requires you to memorize the first nine answers, I believe. And a tenth answer, obviously, but the tenth answer is how you get out of bounds. I just look for something that you could use. It's similar to how the Wither works, the Wither boss battle branch, because you can do it. So I need to think about all these questions here because I don't have them all memorized perfectly. I just want to make sure I don't lose the thing because it'll waste so much time. It's better to go spend a second to think about the answer rather than just running through mountains. And then I know this one is the peonies because it's on the far right here. And then here we go. Snow Golem, and then this one you actually want to choose wrong, or no, this is the next one, sorry, 23 blocks, and this one you choose wrong, you click the Wither, which will spawn a Wither in the middle, and then you can use him like you did in the boss battle branch to blast up here on top, and just keep running forward, and this is useful because then I don't need to think about any of the questions, memorize any more of the questions, and also run around. You do need to be careful that you don't jump straight into these holes, you can't just hold jump or else you will fall into one of those holes there eventually that I'm jumping over. Uh, there are some of them that don't have those holes for some reason. This ice here actually helps you, so that way it speeds you up just enough so you don't fall into the hole right after it, or the one after that. And then these ones are all full in, as you can see there. We need to make sure we don't die there. These ones are all good. Okay, keep going. And we're almost there. I just want to really make sure we don't fall into a hole, because if we do, it basically just kills the branch. We need to do all this over again. You respawn back at question number nine and need to reuse the wither in order to blast yourself back up. Then you go in the middle here, answer the final question, Mojang specifications, grab the wool, and that's a split. Anyway, continuing forward to the survival branch is the shortest branch by far that I always forget to split on because it's so short. And you don't actually get the wool from a wool. You use the, um, yeah, you kind of cheat it a little bit and basically use survival in order to break into the tower that you're not really supposed to mess with. Although, you're not really messing with anything inside the box. You're push placing a button on the outside of the bedrock box and then using it to... Uh, to um, manipulate the command blocks to give you the wool immediately. So you just craft a pickaxe, you use the two wood, you don't need the six anymore, you need a button to pickaxe, and then you can use the two wood in order to get out of the water a little bit faster. I don't think about it, actually it might be a little bit faster to place that on the sand, um, so you have one more block that's closer to jump to, instead of doing it on the side there. So you mine those two blocks, go up here, right inside, beautiful, right there, there's the button and there's the wool, toss it in the thing. This does technically preserve your game mode of survival, although we don't use it in order to go out of bounds in the um, in the hub, so I don't consider this to be a hub glitch. 
which is important. So you could see how you have the outline on the, all those walls and everything. Uh, we don't use that in order to exploit the map by using the pickaxe or anything to mine out. So I went ahead and skipped the survival since I missed the split. Um, although that would have definitely been a green split. It's very hard to mess up that unless you like somehow screw up crafting or something. Next we fall down here. I just die here because it doesn't really do anything to you. Next we extend the stairs. Right up here. Still going up. Alright. I'm going to find the button. We should be able to make it right through here. And then I worked, of course, very hard in order to uh, um, make sure that this is done very well. Make sure that this branch is optimal. This is one of the harder branches to optimize, in my opinion, because it is mostly just gameplay. It's placed at the end for a particular reason, uh, and I'll explain that in just a second. But the one thing I do want to explain is that a potential out of bounds. This escape branch, that, and also the uh, um, labyrinthian are the two potential time saves that I think have the most potential. Um, that are s potentially saving time in the arena, and then we could use a skip in the arena to get out of bounds. So any potential more out of bounds there are. The thing about the arena, so we'll go through a few out of bounds here while we're just playing through the uh, escape branch because it's basically the same as any other thing you can see exactly what's happening on screen there's nothing to explain i'll go ahead and start explaining a few of the potential out of bounds that i want to look into in the future first one is the labyrinthian branch i already posted a video of that out of bounds on my youtube channel it's possible to use a creeper in the same way as in the trivia and boss battle in order to get blasted up and out of bounds on top of the maze although it's impossible to do anything productive with it because you can push the button to clone the block in but it clones the button that you already pushed and the button is cloning a push state and there's no way to get it unpushed if there was a way to clone the button when it's not being pushed or clone the button and have it be unpushed somehow in adventure mode still like then it would allow you to skip the branch pretty much Although, that's not possible to my knowledge, so go watch my previous video if you want a visual example of that. The uh, escape branch, it's possible to get out of bounds here, although you might need to preserve items like Ender Pearls through into this branch, which I don't think, I consider that a hub glitch, because preserving items into the branch, at least, yeah, I think that's a little bit uh, questionable. Although, technically I do, again, conserve the pickaxe and stuff into this branch, I tossed them out at the very beginning, so... It's debatable as to whether that's allowed or not. Um, I don't know of any ways to get out of bounds. The, um, that long hallway that I ran down after exiting the silverfish pit, that's actually the hallway that... Um, the the wall is actually directly above that hallway, and you can, in the um, all branches category, you use inner pearls in order to go through that wall, clip through it, and then you can... Uh, um, just get straight up here. So this section is a little bit sloppy here. I'm a little bit disappointed with how that worked. That's probably the main mess up of this whole section here. Although I just kill myself here on these pressure plates. Anyway, um, and the last branch that I might want to look into is the uh, arena branch, which could have some skips if I decide to skip a different longer branch. Um, possibly the parkour even, or the escape. Actually, I'd probably skip the escape if I were to find out of bounds in the arena. The thing with the arena is there's not really any way to get out of bounds, even using one of the gas to blast boost yourself up like I did in the um, trivia and in the boss battle. Um, you can't actually you can get onto the stands, but you can't get out of the stands from there with all the player heads in it. So that technically is an out of bounds, but one that's not very good. And this actually die on, unfortunately, because I'm bad and I accidentally twitched my mouse too much and ran into the wall so I didn't get a good sprint going out of this section which is unfortunate but it's all right it happens anyway here's one last relog in order to cancel the fall damage here and avoid needing to drop down anyway so the um, those are the other out of bounds that I've considered I've considered also finding an uh, out of bounds is easier in the parkour branch um, the old out of bounds in the parkour branch you use the trap doors in the tutorial section in order to get out of bounds, although that was patched in an older version and a newer version of the map even. I've tried to look into getting an older version of the map, although I don't have access to the older versions. Um, so that would be a uh, very nice if they if there was uh, access to older versions of the map, but that's not possible to my knowledge because all the maps are the newer version. All the downloads, official downloads at least. Anyway, we're almost to the end of this thing. And then we'll see puzzle. The puzzle branch. Uh, one other thing is why I've decided to do escape last. When escape does actually require some skill similar to how the uh, adventure. It's probably similar skill level to the adventure branches, I would say. Not as skilled as the parkour. Uh, maybe even the dropper it's similar skill to. But oh, that's said the dropper is even a little bit harder. 
Anyway, the I do the escape last because the escape is actually, if you look at the item sorter, the first item to be sorted is the cyan wool. So when you put the cyan wool in, there's almost no chance that it'll get stuck and then the branch selection will get stuck if you push the button too fast. Um, I don't even think it's possible to get it stuck if you put the escape in second to last. Um, and I have had runs that have died before because I've put in, say, the... Um, the second to last wool was like the survival wool or whatever. I put that in, and the survival is one of the last ones to get sorted, actually. So it'll completely screw up the thing, and then the only way to fix it is to put in a slime block into the system. But that's obviously cheating to give yourself a slime block, so you can't do uh, you can't do that. So it's very unfortunate when that happens. So I solved that issue by just doing escape as the second to last branch. And if you are do run this category, whether glitchless or non-glitchless, I can easily recommend that you put escape second to last so you don't accidentally screw it up. If you obviously, if you remember not to uh, press the button too fast, it's not going to be an issue at all. But um, if you fail to do that, sometimes like you're just in the heat of the moment, like oh my goodness, I only have one branch left, then you may forget and you'll be like, oh well, that sucks. Anyway, the sheep puzzle you need to memorize this one. Obviously, the first puzzle, the first two puzzles, we just use our the hints to abuse the way through them. Um, but the, these puzzles are. Yeah, uh, you do need to memorize the puzzle for the sheep here, and then the records as well. You need to memorize the order, kind of. I kind of memorize it, although more than, than that, I just memorize the, um, like, the, what the map looks like almost, and then just kind of like, oh, I need to use this one in order to get to the next section or whatnot. Okay. So there's a little bit of RNG based on where these sheeps decide that they want to go. So this guy, actually, I think I need to lure him back with a wool. No, actually, no. He just, he barely stopped there at the right spot. Okay. Now the last one is Mac. We'll get him in there. And there's the last sheep in there. And again, we'll just go ahead and grab these things. I grab the map as a backup just in case I need to. Uh, um, I need to look at it. Although I shouldn't. I didn't look at it in this run, and I usually don't need to look at it. I just like to have it just in case, in case I mess something up somehow. So make sure I got all these ones right. Most is just the Melahai Strad combination, and then when you go through, eventually you need to use the weight disc um, here in order to. Uh, go through and then you keep going through with 13 and then keep on going with Melahai and then the blocks here and other blocks in order to get to the end and then there you go. I'm skipping past a lot of these puzzles but a lot of these puzzles are very enriching so I actually put the green glass in first and then start signing the hint book hint then hint we have three hints is enough to do it in this branch Hint puts you one into the negative hints that's all right though um, one easter egg of this branch is you can actually put in the, I don't remember what the number is, but whatever the intro code is for code 3, if you put in that 5 digit number, then it'll actually give you access to, uh, um, it'll just give you 42 hints, because 42 is the meaning of life, and then you can use those hints in order to solve whatever you want, obviously, so... Okay, so there's the, the last thing. The last wool here, we put it in, and you can still see that um, a lot of the commands didn't get set right after the survival branch because we actually skipped part of the action that command blocks take. The only ones I activated were the ones that, like, basically the ones that um, give you the wool and teleport you back. I didn't really activate any other command blocks. Um, there are a few other ones, but most of them, like, game roll command blocks and all those things, they didn't even get activated, which is <laughs> annoying because then the wool drops down and it doesn't clear your inventory and stuff. And it doesn't reset your game mode or anything, so... Technically, that is a way to preserve your game mode is go into the survival branch and just press a button to complete it, which is probably faster than trying to use the uh, um, old exploitation of the return to hub machine. So, yeah. Anyway, we'll go down here to the inner pearl section. This section is relatively simple. Basically, just pearl onto these platforms here. And a little explanation, exhibition, not even exhibition, but just... Uh, thing about the end here is the fact that there's actually a portal that generated a 1.9 that generated at 0, 0 in the end um, that you could go into. Um, however, I don't think that it's really necessary, I guess. Um, or you could just go into that portal, see that's right there in the middle of the path. And that's the portal I used to go into, but I don't know if that's actually allowed by speedrun.com rules, so I actually skip it. I checked a variety of runs, including glitchless runs. Um, I even checked, they even had a forum post about it that asked if you're allowed to go into that first in portal. Um, and there wasn't an answer. I even checked some glitched runs and none of them went in there, so I just decided to skip it for sake of uh, 
lack of better judgment, you know. So anyway, that's the end of this run. This run was a 27, 20, 35 um, in-game time over there, which is a very good time. I was very excited with this run. Um, unfortunately, you can't hear my reaction because I wasn't um, on the mic at the time. However, I will tell you right now that I reset my splits, but you saw that time. It was a very good time. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it was really uh, fun to make, and I hope that you guys had a great time watching it, and I'll talk to you guys later.